In 2026, everyone is saying that budget gaming is dead. GPUs cost more than rent, RAM is just a meme, and the comments say just buy a console. This makes no sense. So today we're gonna do a reality check. I built four gaming PCs ranging from $250 to $2,000, ran the same benchmarks across all of them, and I'm gonna show you exactly where to put your money in 2026. All right, so now we have what I'm calling the mistake build. This build is $250. It includes a FX 8370, 8GB of DDR3, a GTX 1060 6GB version, and a 1TB HHD. Now for the benchmarks, we have three mark times five with a score of 4,107. The CPU profile score came out to a max thread score of 1,335 a single thread score of 226, and a storage score of 111, which is absolutely terrible. And really, these numbers just explain everything. The GPU is trying, the CPU is just absolutely ancient, and the storage score is catastrophic at, at best. Now, that 226 single thread score, that is why frame pacing feels terrible, but the FPS doesn't necessarily look that bad. Now, the verdict with the system is $250 is wasted. Don't bother, don't build this, unless it's absolutely free. It's just not worth it. Now, moving on to PC number two. This is what I'm calling the minimum viable gaming PC build. It is kind of just basically the entry level, and this is where things start to improve quite a bit. Now, the specs for this system is a Ryzen 1600X, the same GTX 1060, six gigabyte version, and then a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Moving into the benchmarks for 3D Mark Time Spy, we have a 4,526 score. The CPU score came out to a max thread score of 3,225. The single thread score came out to 461, and the storage score, which improved quite considerably, came out to 2,617. Now this is the same GPU, but a completely different story. The single thread performance doubles, the multi-thread basically triples, and the storage score jumps from 111 to 2,617. That is the difference between stuttering versus smooth gameplay, crashes versus stability, and it runs versus it feels good. This is the absolute floor for gaming in 2026. And the verdict is this is pretty much the cheapest system that actually works. So now for build three, I'm calling this the sweet spot build. The specs for this build is a Ryzen R7 2700X, 32 gigabytes of DDR4, an RTX 5700 XT, and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. This is the same one from the last test. We're using it here again. Now moving into the benchmarks, the 3D Mark Time Spy came out to 8,921. The CPU single thread score came out to 4,831. The single thread score came out to 562. The storage benchmark came out to 2,693. Time Spy nearly doubles again. Single thread scores smooth out to basically cater to modern day gaming. And the multi-thread score basically allows you to do any background streaming, do any recording while you're playing video games or any background tasks that you have in mind. And notice something important, the storage basically stays the same. Because once you're on an NVMe, you're basically just done. And really at 1080p, this system isn't just trying, it's crushing. And the verdict for this build, I'm giving this the crown. This is the best price to performance and the system basically crushes everything else in that category in this list. Now, for system number four, this makes no sense for modern 1080p gaming. I threw it in here just to show that you don't need this, uh, but I'm gonna run through the specs anyways and show you guys the benchmarks. Oh, and I forgot. <laughs> I'm naming this one just the overkill build. It's not necessary whatsoever. All right, so going into the specs, we have a Ryzen R9 3750X 3D, 64 gigabytes of DDR5, a RTX 3090, and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. For the benchmarks, 3D Mark Time Spy came out to 18,617. The CPU profile for multi-threaded came out to 14,944. The single thread score came out to 1100, and the storage score, basically the same, came out to 2808. These numbers are just absolutely insane for 1080p gaming. But here's the uncomfortable truth. 1080p does not scale with these benchmarks. Yes, Time Spy doubles again, the CPU scores are absolutely absurd, but the storage scores are really basically a little bit higher than a $400 PC. You're paying almost three times the cost just for the performance to show up on charts, not gameplay. The verdict is, it's incredible hardware, but it's terrible for 1080p gaming. So for the final conclusion and the benchmark reality, the $250 PC is just an unplayable experience. Don't build this unless you get it for free. 
and I just don't think it's worth it whatsoever. For the $400 PC, this computer is actually stable. It's viable on today's market. It's super cheap if you're trying to get an entry level PC. Now for the $645 PC, I think this is the price to performance king, and this is what I would rec recommend for this video, and I think you should potentially buy if you're looking to get a PC in 2026. Now for the $2,000 PC, this just makes absolutely no sense. You're paying all that money just for performance on charts, not actually for performance in 1080p gaming. Benchmarks don't lie, but context matters. Once you hit the sweet spot, you're spending more money just for prettier graphs. Build smart, not expensive. And with that being said, like, comment, subscribe if this helped you out, and have a great day. Bye.